So, hello, 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 everybody. Um, we decided that we were going to do things a little bit different this Sunday with our Sunday school lesson. I invited my class, and a few of them were able to show up. So, um, I wanted to make sure that they were still, that y'all are still um, engaged, actively engaged in what's going on in our lesson. So, I invite y'all to come out to do this lesson with us today. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Our lesson topic today is, he is not here. Um, let's pause for a word of prayer, if you will, bow your heads. Most gracious heavenly Father, Lord, it is once again that a few of your servants come before you, Father God, first just to say thank you. Thank you, God, for being God. Thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you, God, for being bigger. Thank you, God, for being greater. Thank you, God, for being so wise. Lord, we realize that you are bigger than COVID-19. You are bigger than anything that we can face. And for that, we just praise and we worship you. God, we thank you, Father God, for another opportunity to study and to learn your word, Father God. We ask that you, Father God, to just touch our hearts and our minds that we may be able to learn, touch our hearts to be able to apply it to our hearts and then allow us to be able to go out and share your word with somebody else. Father, we just love you. We honor you. We praise you. We thank you, God, again, for this opportunity. We just love you. We honor you. We thank you, God, for just being who you are in our lives. Be with us, Father God, today and every day, and we'll praise you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so our lesson topic today is He is Not Here. And um, our scripture comes from 1 Corinthians. 15 verses 1 through 8, 12 through 14, 20 through 23, and 42 through 45. And of course, uh, you know, y'all usually get to read these with me, but because you don't have your Sunday school lesson and I did not share it with you, which I had intended to, I'm going to go ahead and read it myself today. But if you have your phones, if you're able to get to a device where you can look it up, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Yeah, y'all. Okay. Now we're going to read from the New Revised Standard Version. So tell me when y'all get there, and we'll go ahead and start reading. You said 1 Corinthians what? Chapter 15. You got it? All right, we're going to start with verse 1. Verses 1 through 8 reads, now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn receive, and which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I hand it on to you as the first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins, in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Verse 12 through 14. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ had not been raised. And if Christ had not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. Verses 20 through 23. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each of his own order, Christ, the first fruits, and then as his coming, those who belong to Christ. And then verses 42 through 45 reads, so, it is with the resurrection of the dead, 
what is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, being a living being, the last Adam became a life-given spirit. Amen. All right, so um, I want to read the intro. I got a, I'm going from both books, our class book, and the women's class book, because there's some good information in both. It says, um, First Corinthians was an epistle or a letter written to the Apostle Paul, letter written by the Apostle Paul to the Church of God at Corinth. It is uncertain, but Bible scholars believe the letter was probably written between AD 54 and 56 on Paul's third missionary journey. Paul wrote this letter from Ephesus a city where he ministered for approximately three years. An array of nationalities including Jews, Egyptians, Syrians, Greeks, and Romans lived in the city of Corinth. Corinth was a materially prosperous city known for its immoral living. It was an intellectual and cultural center as well. The people of Corinth had little regard for the law. The local residents of the city worship Aphrodite, better known as the Greek goddess of love, whose temple housed 1,000 sacred prostitutes. The city was morally corrupt and in great need of the gospel. Unfortunately, some of the Christians living there were questioning their own beliefs. Members of the church were arguing, forming cliques and feuding, which ultimately resulted in division and splits. In one of their letters to Paul, the Corinthians wanted to know the truth about bodily resurrection. Thus, they turned to their spiritual leader, the Apostle Paul, for advice. Paul wrote this letter for the purpose of unifying the church and to address some of their misconceptions and confusion as it related to the gospel of Jesus Christ pertaining to such matters as marriage, public worship, Christian liberty, Christian liberty and rights, spiritual gifts, and the resurrection from the dead. Okay, back in our book, it says, today, Easter Sunday, is the day to celebrate the reason that we as Christians can even call ourselves Christians. This is the day that we remember the miraculous moment when Jesus rose from the grave, laying the foundation of our hope and faith. Without the resurrection, Paul says that our faith would be pointless, but because of the resurrection, our lives take on an entirely new purpose. And, and in our current situation, I was reading that and I was thinking about today actually being Easter Sunday, and we're in a place where we're, we're facing some um, different uh, circumstances. Our normal is not the normal that we've known before. And so, this actually gives us an opportunity to me to focus on our resurrection, on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This helps us to be able to focus on what's actually important because so many times Easter Sunday comes and we're caught up in the hustle and bustle of trying to um, find outfits and find, uh, get stuff ready for dinner because we pl we're planning these family dinners and things of that nature. And we kind of lose focus on y'all learning y'all Easter parts and getting ready for y'all uh, Easter programs at church. And we've had practices up until this point. So schedules have been so hectic. And what was our normal before? Um, coming up to Easter Sunday, we kind of lose focus on what we're actually, what we're actually looking at. So right now, God has put us in a place where we can focus totally and wholly on the resurrection of Christ. We've got time to think, we've got time to study, we've got time to focus on what is actually uh, presented before us. That Jesus died, and not only did he die, but he rose. He rose for our, he took all of our sins, all of our 
issues and he died on the cross with those things. And when he rose, he gave us a resurrected life. He gave us an opportunity to live again because when Adam died, or when, when Adam and Eve was in the garden, they sinned, they brought death upon us. And so Jesus had to come to resurrect us back to God, to get us back in standing with God. So we've got time now to focus on what is actually important and what's actually going on. Um, this next paragraph says, many people struggle to understand and even accept Christ, even accept Christ was resurrected. That is why many doubt Christianity as a whole. Yet this is nothing new. And as Christians, we have a mission. Through our faith and spirit, we, we are equipped and called to help others understand Jesus' sacrifice, giving them hope through the meaning of Easter. In today's passage, we're giving a blueprint for how to help people understand the meaning of the resurrection. Paul wrote to the church of Corinth to help them overcome doubts about the resurrection. Um, and you know, I try to make sure that when we're having conversations and even in our classrooms, that um, we can relate this to things that you face or things you may be going through. And as I was reading and studying, I started thinking about um, people who doubt Christianity and who don't believe. And, and you know, I've said several times that there's so many of you that will be embarking on a new stage of your life soon. You'll be going to college campuses. I uh, think those that I have with me today, y'all have probably got a couple more years, but they'll go by so fast and you'll be embarking on these new uh, adventures in your life or whatever you decide to do uh, post-secondary after you finish high school. So you're going to encounter people who have a totally different belief system and they're going to, they're going to want to persuade, persuade you uh, to see things their way. They're going to want you to see, th they're going to want you to believe what they believe. And so you have to stay grounded. You have to be rooted in what you know and what you believe. And because they doubt Christianity, and there's many who will, there's many who do, um, they're going to want you to, they're going to pose questions and pose situations to try to create that same doubt in you. They're going to want you to doubt because if they can get you to start doubting, then they can play on your faith. They can, and all it takes is one inkling, but by the same merit, by that same token, you can influence others with just one thought, with one word, with, with your actions, with whatever you have going on, you can persuade those others as well. So, um, you know, I've always told you, be, be leaders, be, be leaders. Don't, don't give in to what anybody's saying. And like I said, there's going to come a time when people are going to ask you to doubt. They're, they're going to try to force you to doubt what's actually going on. All right, y'all got any questions? Oh, okay, um, there's a question at the bottom of this page. You don't have the question sometimes in the bottom. It says, what impact is, my first question is, how would you define your faith? What, what is faith? What do you think faith is? Your belief. Your belief. And that's, that's it. You're, what you believe, what you know is true. That's what faith is. And so the oh, question yeah. is, what, um, what impact can doubts have on your faith? So if they're able to convince you to doubt, how does that impact your faith? Anybody? Can you repeat the question? What impact can doubt have on your faith? If you start, if they're able to convince you to start doubting, to question what you know, how does that impact your faith? Does it make it stronger or does it weaken it? Hmm? 
What do you think? Shalari, what's, what's your thoughts? Will it strengthen your faith or will it make it weak? Will it weaken, weaken your faith? It will weaken your faith. Weaken your faith. Absolutely. If, you start, if, if they're able to convince you to doubt what's going on, then they're able to weaken your faith. So you have to stand strong on what you know. All right. Um, our next topic is fighting the doubt. When Mary, the mother of James, Mary Magdalene, and Salome went to the tomb to care for Jesus' body, they saw the large stone that once covered the tomb entrance had been rolled away. An angel sitting inside the tomb told them that Jesus was no longer dead and instructed them to go and tell his disciples. Despite their fear, the women obeyed, but they were met with disbelief. Even after seeing the empty tomb, some of the disciples would only believe if they actually saw Jesus alive. A similar disbelief troubled the people of Corinth. Paul began this chapter by recounting the good news of Jesus' resurrection to the believers. He also mentioned all the people that Jesus appeared to and had seen his ascension into heaven after he rose from the dead. It had only been around 23 years since the resurrection, and some who witnessed his resurrection were still alive at the time. Paul called out to those in the church in Corinth who claimed that the dead could not rise and live again. Yet those who had worked with them and given them counsel had witnessed these signs, these things. The resurrection was the foundation of their faith. Paul explained that declaring it is impossible for the dead to resurrect is to declare that Christian faith is impossible. But Paul told them that it was their belief in the resurrection that saved them as it was written. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. Even if you are a Christian, you may struggle with the same thoughts sometimes. Many Christians do. How is it at that point that you must choose, however, however it is at that point that you must choose to place your faith in the fact that Jesus is alive after being killed. Allow your faith to inspire you to share it with others and to affirm them in what you believe. So again, the resurrection, it says the resurrection was the foundation of their faith. Our faith is like we said earlier, is what we believe. And so that's all we have is what we believe. All we have is what, we're, what we believe. We have to stand on that. Um, have you ever been asked to believe something that you didn't see with your own eyes? No, never. Have you ever been asked to believe something that you did not see with your own eyes? Think about it. If Shaleria said, that she saw Susie's boyfriend talking to Jessica at school. What y'all gonna believe? Shalita? You gonna believe Shalaria? Trust her. That's your friend. You didn't see it, but you gonna believe it. I'm gonna know it. So, we're all at some point asked to believe something that we didn't see. And so that's where their faith was being shaken because they didn't see it. And so they didn't, they didn't know if they could believe it. And that's what you're going to face again. You're going to have people that's going to come to you and say, that don't make sense. You can't do that. That don't happen. That can't happen. People are especially, um, well, not especially, People have this scientifically um, generated or mindset. So if it, they can't prove it scientifically, then they don't believe it. So, so um, I'm sorry. We just said it gave us some more time. So we we here. We good. But anyway. Um, 
So people have a tendency to not believe what they don't see or what they can't scientifically prove. They want everything to be proved. You know, y'all did these science fair projects and y'all done uh, most of the science fair projects, a few of y'all have, where you've had to start this whole scientific theory and you had to go through the scientific process. Y'all remember that? What was the process? I don't remember. It's been quite a while for me. Y'all remember the scientific process? Huh? We did that roller coaster. Yeah. And then, you know, and maybe I haven't gotten to that for, but I know when we used to be in science class, we would have to, um, you know, you had your theory and your hypotenuse, hypotheses, I'm sorry, that's hypotenuse, that's math, sorry. Uh, but you <laughs> <laughs> your hypotheses and you had all this stuff and you had to go through the steps you had to prove what your hypothesis was and so it's kind of the same way here people want it to be proven and you're going to encounter people who want it to be proven but that's where our faith comes in that's when we have to stand on our faith and believe god believe the word of god for what it is it is we just have to believe that that's where our faith comes into play. All right, y'all got any questions? Okay. The first crop. While Adam and Eve were the first to bring death into the world with their disobedience, Christ was the first and only to defeat it. Because of his earthly resurrection, it urged in the possibility for his followers to experience an eternal resurrection. Without that sacrifice, we would never have been free from death's control over us. See, and again, this is our time, this is our moment to be able to focus on that, to just be able to sit down and mellow in that moment and think about what awesome gift God, Jesus actually gave us then. You know, we, we, we don't, sometimes we, we kind of go through life and we know things. We know that Jesus died on the cross, but again, we get so caught up in what's going on in our daily lives and having to go to work and having to do this and do that and, and go to school and all these things y'all have going on. Then we forget about those. We, we, we lose um, focus on what's true and what's actually um, before us and what precious, precious gifts we have. And so this is our opportunity to just sit back and think about what really happened. Um, It says, without that sacrifice, we would never, never have been free from death's control over us. Never. Death would be the end. But because of the sacrifice, because of his death, burial, and resurrection, we're able to experience, we know that we have eternal life. Paul proceeded to explain that instead of the dead returning to life in their physical bodies, now we know that don't happen, the resurrection happens for a spiritual body that is nurtured and developed during a life of faith and obedience to God. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Even though our physical bodies may be destroyed, our spiritual bodies will rise to be with Christ. The spiritual body will not be degraded or limited I'm sorry, the spiritual body will not be degraded or limited like the physical body. Instead, it will be raised in the glory and power of God, but only if we believe in the resurrection of Christ. What do you do with your physical body? What you do with your physical body determines the growth of your spiritual body. Your time on earth will have eternal effects because God has a will he has placed on your life as his follower. Regardless of what that specific calling is, it will be centered around knowing God and making him known to others. Think about your own life and what you are involved in right now. How are you, how are you growing your spiritual bodies through your actions and the things that you do every day? And I won't ask y'all to answer that question, but you know, like I've told y'all before, um, think about it. Become conscious of your question. Become conscious of these things that we discussed so that if you're doing something, you know, maybe it'll run across your mind. What, what am I doing to my physical body now that's going to affect my spiritual body? Uh, what, is what I'm doing right now going to benefit me, benefit my spiritual body, or is it going to hurt my spiritual body?
So be mindful of those things as we go about our days and, and activities in life. Uh, what we're doing physically, will it affect our spiritual bodies? Questions? Questions? All right. Um, heart of the matter, and this is kind of our um, real life application. This is making their way through the school halls, passing out fires for the upcoming Easter service. Alicia and Marcus were walking toward their friend Devin. They knew he was an atheist, but Alicia and Marcus was determined to change his heart. Hey, Devin. We are having a big event for Easter this weekend, Alicia said. Easter? Why would I want to come to that nonsense? You know, I love hanging with you guys, but this ain't my thing. There isn't any, any way someone who someone was raised from the dead like that, Devin said, handing the flyer back. Dude, you have always just missed the point. You believe in nothing. Isn't it better to put your faith in something? You say you are open-minded, but you never give us a chance. No pressure. Just come once. Marcus was holding the flyer out. I don't know. I'll have to catch y'all later, Devin said, taking back the flyer and walking away. On Easter Sunday, to their surprise, Devin walked in their youth group. The two immediately ran up to him and invited him to sit with them and their friends. In Sunday school and worship, Devin heard about the resurrection of Jesus and left smiling. The next day at school, the three of them met again in the hallway. What did you think, Alicia asked. It was different than I thought it would be. I still have doubts. But Jesus saved us from our sins through his death and resurrection makes more sense now. So that means you'll come back, right? I will. I want to understand Jesus' purpose more. So just like people will try to influence you to believe their system, you can have the same impact on somebody else. Because sharing Christ is just that easy. Just like Marcus and Alicia did, it's, it's, it's not a hard task. It's easy. No pressure, no pushing, no forcefulness. Just extend the invitation. Just share. Just spark that interest. And then you, we have to live our lives so that people want to see. Because sometimes we'll do things um, and we hinder people from coming to Christ. So it's on us to live our lives so that people will want to follow Christ. Okay? We do what we can and God will do the rest. He is not there. He is not there. He has risen. And that's, that's that's a blessing, y'all. Like, really, that we don't realize it. But, like, again, I thank God for this opportunity. Um, that even though we're in a crisis situation, we're in a, um, I wouldn't even call it a crisis. We're in a situation. Because Christ is in, control, is in charge, and he's in control. So I don't call it a crisis. Uh, we're in a different situation. But God is in control. I trust him wholeheartedly. And so that's all we have is to believe. But now that we're in this season, it's given us an opportunity to evaluate some things, to look at some things, to um, change our focus, to change our shifts. So now we get so wrapped up that God has to shake us up to make to, to get out, get us refocused. Like the, the people at Corona, they had lost their focus. They had kind of lost track. And that was one reason why they went back to power. They, they were confused. They were, their faith was wrong. It was going back and forth. So it was an opportunity for them to reevaluate their lives. So that's what God's given us a chance to just look at the gift that we have. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, no questions? Yeah, I know Ashley just came. <laughs> all right, there's no questions. I love you all. Thank y'all for coming in. Thank you, Morgan, Jemaya, Diara, Amaya, Shalilia. Thank y'all for so joining us. I love y'all. I miss y'all. I really do. <laughs> we love you, Rocky Mount. 
Um, and until we meet again, be blessed. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. How blessed we are, amen, once again to be in the Lord's presence and to uh, come before you with a word, amen, from the Lord, amen. Before we give the word, I would like to say how blessed I am to uh, be the pastor of a very fine church, one who is doing all they can uh, to help one another and also to keep themselves safely. I am just tickled pink, amen, to see all the responses uh, that is being uh, given by those of you who truly trust in the Lord. You're bringing your tithes and your offering to the church as if uh, we are here uh, every Sunday, and I just thank the Lord for that, and I do believe that uh, that's what the Lord will have us to do. Even though we are not meeting physically, amen, there's still work to be done, bills to be paid, Amen. And things uh, uh, to do. So thank you uh, very much uh, for all that you do for kingdom building and that you do in uh, the uh, Lord's uh, uh, place. Amen. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Amen. Now, today is Easter. And there's a word that we want to share with you that is found in the gospel as recorded by St. Luke. Uh, chapter 24. Amen. Verses one through verse six. And we are going to uh, break into this particular. Uh, uh, well, let, me, let, let, let us read. It. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass that they was merged preplex. There about them, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their face to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Amen. And I want to uh, talk to us this day on this Easter Sunday uh, morning uh, about the empty tomb. Amen. And I believe that the empty tomb shouts uh, this morning. It shouts a message to the whole wide world that Jesus is alive and well. No matter what is going on, amen, uh, in the world today, Jesus is still in control. God, with all of his wisdom and God, with all of his insight into all things and being everywhere present, he is still in control of everything. And we find uh, today uh, in our text that Luke, the uh, beloved uh, physician, uh, beloved doctor, writes an account of what he knew, amen, about the empty tomb, the same as did the other gospel writers, namely Matthew, Mark, and John. They all wrote about the, the discovery, amen, of the empty tomb. But all went on, amen, as they discovered what was going on in the grave. For you and I today, the empty tomb shouts uh, to us three things. Amen. As only the angels could shout in verse 5. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He meaning Jesus Christ is not here. Amen. But is risen. The angel said, don't y'all remember how he spoke unto you saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and rise again. And we want you to know today that the empty tomb shouts, first of all, that God is love. 
Secondly, we want you to know that it shouts good news from a graveyard. And then thirdly, it shouts uh, the victory shout of eternal life. And as I said earlier, today is Easter Sunday. The great getting up morning for Jesus Christ and the happiness of those of us, amen, who believe in him. On this day, it is the day that we, the church, celebrate the world's greatest event, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Historically, many people that went out and bought all kinds of new outfits. Amen. And I'm so happy that you did. And I remember back on past uh, Easter Sunday mornings, how pretty uh, our children uh, dresses up with their bows in their hair. Amen. And the dresses that they wear. And then our grown people are wearing a uh, sharp three-piece. Amen. Uh, sisterhood is wearing a uh, Nice uh, uh, clothes, and especially with a hat. I'm just thankful, amen, to know that God is still in the blessing business. Now, even though we are not wearing those outfits today, and I'm sitting here in, this, in my own office looking around and <laughs> trying to uh, uh, deliver an uh, Easter sermon uh, for us, we want you to know today that God is still in the blessing business. Now, when I think about it, the definition of the word shout, I think of a loud crying or a crying out with a loud voice. And I believe that the angels shout to us this morning that there is no fear about anything. The Bible says that they were afraid. They bowed their faces to the earth. They said unto him, why seek you the living among the dead? He is not here. Come and see the place where he was laid. The women that came to the box, to the grave uh, was fearful, amen, because they saw something that they was not expecting. They thought that somebody had came and took the Lord's body from the grave. But my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we have no fear because God, amen, always has an answer for anything that possible. Us. The angel said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here. Come and see the place where he was laid. The empty tomb shouts this morning that God is love. And since God is love, there is no fear in worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Yes, we may be in our own homes today, but we always must worship. God in spirit and in truth. We must always let the world know that it is in him that we live, move, and have our very being. The women, when they got uh, to the grave site, they found the stone rolled away. And I imagine in my sanctified mind that as they walked towards the graveyard, they was wondering how in the world they was going to remove the stone that was blocking their way from getting in to what Christ is in. But God in his own wisdom had everything worked out. The stone that needed rolling away was not to let Jesus out, but to let Mary and the other women uh, an avenue to come in. Amen. The body was missing. Yes, but God had an answer for them through the two men who said, why seek ye the living among the dead? Ain't you glad to know that God always has an answer for anything that may pop up in our lifetime? No matter what it is, God got in answer. His answer was to the women was, why seek ye the living among the dead? And it's ironic today that people are still uh, seeking the living among the dead. Amen. Amen. We need to always remember that we ought to keep our eyes on Christ. Amen. The Bible 
lets us know that God is love. I heard John say in John 3 and verse 16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. My brothers and sisters here, you are going to seek out the and find Jesus Christ. Jesus is not found uh, in dead things. He's not found in Mohammed. He's not found in Buddha. He's not found in the Jehovah Witness. Nor is he found uh, in the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, he is uh, a living, amen, element that is alive, amen, and well. The angel said, why do you seek the living among the dead? Paul said, but God commended his love towards us. And then while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you and I. Ain't you glad today, amen, to know that if you want to seek Christ, you must seek him in spirit and in truth. And when you seek the Lord uh, in spirit, God is always on time. Amen. Because what happened at the tomb uh, is the greatest a miracle that Jesus ever did. Yes, he died on the cross. Yes, he fed. 5,000. Yes, he turned water into wine. Yes, uh, he healed the sick and he raised the dead. And all those things are good, but they have nothing to do uh, with your salvation. Amen. Once he died on Calvary Cross and was placed in the tomb, uh, was part of the Easter story. And once he was placed uh, in the tomb, he had already told him that if you destroy this body, in three days I will rise once again. So the empty tomb shouts uh, this morning that there is good news uh, from the graveyard. The angels shouted, why are you searching for the living uh, among the dead? He is not here. Amen. He has a rose, just like he said he did. That's good news uh, to me. Amen. I don't worship a dead God, but I worship a living Savior who conquered death and the grave. Amen. For me. Look at it, what the angels say. Don't y'all remember how Jesus spoken to y'all? saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and the third day rise again. I don't know about you today, but the graveyard is the last place uh, that I expected a man to find good news. Uh, but the good news uh, is that Christ rose uh, from the dead. Amen. And he came up uh, through the graveyard. It's good news today. Amen. You know that when he rose uh, and I believed in him. Amen. He forgave me of all my sin based on what? Amen. He did uh, on uh, that third day morning. Don't you know the name that had not Jesus did what he did? Uh, when he did it, uh, you and I would have no hope uh, for eternal life. Had not God uh, intervened, uh, we would have no hope and we would have nothing to rejoice about. But I'm thankful today that on Easter, I got something other to hope for. I got hope because all my hope is built upon Jesus Christ. Not only Amen. Did we get good news uh, from the graveyard? But we also got, amen, the victory shout. The angel said that he is not here. Come on uh, and see the place uh, where he was laid. Come see the place 
where he once was. Come up and see the linen cloth uh, that he once wore. Come and see what death was, uh, but death is no more. Come up and see the place where all creation held his breath. Come uh, and see uh, who would be the victor and who would uh, be the victim. Come and see uh, who would conquer and who will uh, be conquered. And uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, Christ not uh, conquered death and not uh, Christ not uh, comfort. Amen. The grave. And, uh, and I don't know uh, about you today, uh, but the empty tomb shouts and not uh, that God uh, is love. And not uh, it shouts and not uh, the victory shouts and not uh, it up from the uh, from the grave, not Jesus rose, and not up, and not from the grave, and not my Savior, and not rose up, and not with all power, and not, and I don't know, and not about you today, and not, but I believe, and not the empty tomb shout, and not like Jesus shouted, and not on, oh, and not that day, and not I heard him say, and not that I. And not am he, and not that was dead, and not but now, and not I'm alive, and not forevermore, and not, and I don't know, and not about you today, and not, but I thank my God, and not for he is, and not I heard him say, and not that you, and not I, and not he lifted up, and not I would, and not draw, and not all, oh, and not man, and not. Under him, now they lifted him high, and now stretched him wide, and now placed him, and now in a barry tomb, and now and while, and now he was in the tomb, and now I heard, and now the Bible say, and now that he went down, and now to Hades, and now preached, and now a revival, and now and he said, and now oh, all those, and now who are heavy laden, and now come on, and now. Under me, and not yes, and not the grave, and not thought he had it, and not the tomb, and not thought he had it, and not, and I heard, and not death, and not speak, and not to the tomb, and not I got, and not that liar, and not I'm holding on, and not day one, and not, and day two, and not, but I heard, and not. The tomb say and not something and not is going on and not for the tomb and not stone and not is rolled away and not and then and not by the time and not somebody said and not that the rooster and not crowed and not that he crowed and not too late and not for my God and not had gotten up and not with all power and not in his hand and not power and not do what nobody else can do. My brothers and sisters, the tomb shout, the empty tomb shout that God is love and it's good news from the graveyard. It's good news because the victory shout. Amen. The Jesus conquered death. And I heard him say that I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he was dead, yet should he live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And the question is, do you believe that? And if you believe that, you can have eternal life, simply because he got up with all power in his hand. Power to save you, power to keep you, even in these troublesome times we find ourselves in. Don't worry about the virus. Just follow direction. Be saved. Wash your hands. Amen. Amen. When you go out and you come in, wash them again. You ought to have the cleanest hand. Amen. In Talladega. May the Lord forever bless you on this uh, Easter Sunday morning. And may he always be with you. God is love. We love you. The Lord love you. And there's nothing you can do about it and say thank you, Jesus. And his son to take the punishment for all the thoughtless, sinful things we do. Jesus gave his life because he loves us. 
His love is wonderfully sweet, forever true. On Easter morning he showed he is our Savior. His resurrection proves he is our Lord. That is why we tell you, Happy Easter. He secured our heavenly rule.